thewellnesscouch.com, streaming wellness into your lives. Welcome to 100 Not Out, featuring your hosts, Dr. Damien Christoph and Marcus Pierce. Welcome to 100 Not Out, a weekly show dedicated to helping you master the art of aging well. My name is Marcus Pierce, and I'm here with the second biggest football fanatic in the world, behind myself, of course, the legendary co-founder of the Wellness Couch and the Wellness Guys. Here's Dr. Damien Christoph. Hi, Damo. Oh, Marcus, so good to be here again with you in my home. I'm loving, I'm loving being at 100 Not Out headquarters, also the Christoph residence. But as much as this uh, following episode could be a very, um, it could be a Melbourne football club interview because we're about to interview a triple premiership captain of the Melbourne Football Club but we're going to really go down the path of history and wisdom to really learn about what it is to to learn from someone who's going to be 90 this year. Um, You know a lot about this man Damien and so I'm going to ask you to introduce Mr. Noel McMahon who played for Melbourne and you've met him recently and maybe just share with listeners what you've learned from Noel before we actually glean the wisdom from the great man. Sure. Thanks, Marcus. Well, look, I don't know Noel very, very well, but when my beautiful uh, grandmother-in-law, and I say grandmother-in-law because she, she's my my wife's grandmother, um, Isabel had her 95th birthday just only a couple of weeks ago. I had the pleasure of sitting next to Noel McMahon. And Noel, you know, we got talking, we had some really fabulous chats, we spoke you know, about so many different things, but one of the things that I was most inspired with, and very inspired by Isabel as well, is that the fear of moving into a nursing facility or an older, an old people's home, I suppose many people refer this to or refer to it as, um, is often a reason to not go in there. But both Noel and Isabel have embraced this and built a community and they've got friends, best friends, people they like to hang out with and then go and do trips with and tours with. And, and I loved talking to Noel about, you know, the things that excites him and, and, and what he learned in his life. And I thought, what an amazing thing to be able to do to interview an absolute champion of a game that we all love but also at the same time learn from a man who's lived 90 years and has gained so much wisdom. So, Noel, I'd love to welcome you to 100 Not Out, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Damien. You're very kind. Noel, I'd love to ask you, first off, um, as Damien said, you really uh, had a spark on him in terms of the first impression that you left about um, living in a nursing home. This is always a big decision for someone in their life. I'd like love to know from you how did it how did it come about that you found yourself um, can I mention the name of the nursing home? Um, probably not. No, we will. Okay. How did it come? How did it come that you you made this transition and was it a big decision for you? Because this is a, a, a again a really big thing for a lot of people. Yes, uh, Marcus. I was living with my daughter. I've got three daughters, one in in America and one in Canada. Canada. And Annie's the only one here. And she is on her own, and she was looking after me. And she was going to work and worrying about me as I was getting older. And I thought, this is not fair. I shouldn't be a burden to anybody. So I spoke to some people at Box Hill RSL, where I was on the board for 15 years, and they told me that they had people in this place here everybody was very happy and they'd be happy to find a place for me. So that led to it. Then I was a bit afeard. I worried about going into with old people in old people's homes, as we called it. And uh, for the first three or four days after I came in, I was sitting on, on eggs. I was worried. After three days, I was thinking, why was I worried? And from there on, I've been ever, ever grateful to be here. The environment is perfect for me at my age. The, the relationship with the, with the staff is absolutely outstanding. They all know your name. They all treat you as, like a very close friend. And the people here are all very grateful too. The, the atmosphere is good. I couldn't think of anything better. And it shall leave my daughter Annie to get on with her life which I'm grateful for. Noel, it's beautiful to hear and it's great. 
I, when I sat with you, Noel, um, at, at Isabel's party, and it was a beautiful day, wasn't it? It was such a... It was lovely. Such she's a, a lovely day. lady. Oh, she's such a beautiful woman. And, you know, my grandmother, my, my nana, was my number one favourite woman in the world, and she had big shoes to fill. But I reckon Isabel fills those shoes, and I, and I yeah. love her. And when I, when I give Isabel a cuddle, I feel like I'm cuddling my own grandmother. So, I, um, you know, I'm so grateful that you're one of her friends. It's great. But I noticed that you were so sharp, and as I've... I'm only 42, but as I get older, I, I still feel sharp and I still feel young and I still feel like I did when I was 28. In fact, I commented the other day that I feel healthier and fitter today than what I have in my whole life, even though I'm 42. And so I was, you know, I was taken back by your sharpness and the, and your memories and the things that you could remember. And, uh, and I love that. Do you have any secrets or wisdom around your memory and your ability to recall facts and figures? No, I haven't. The only one <clears throat> lesson I learned from my boss was when you meet somebody, shake their hand, look them in the eye, and repeat their name. I love that. And that, that name then will stick in your mind. If you don't repeat their name, you'll wander. That's missing so much, though, in society today, isn't it, Nolan Damien? Like, that's what people are craving, but no one's giving it to them and i know damien as a chiropractor like creating relationships with people is everything yeah absolutely well i'll shake people's hands and i get to the point in my practice i know we're not supposed to do this in chiropractic but i'll hug my patients i love it um but uh, But repeating their name is the secret i think to the the memory side and having interest and asking questions isn't it oh yes 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 can i ask you Noel, in terms of what you speak about, in, in you said that that's been a uh, it is a secret these days to be well mannered and use people's names and the rest of it. But when Damien asks you about your memory, we often talk about um, life purpose and regular movement and and having a great social life as being really key parts of of that. Do you do you reflect on your life turning ninety this year and think that you know for the majority of your life you have spent your time doing what you love and if I could if I can just take that question a bit further was was football a real passion for you because I I know back then you weren't earning the millions of dollars which players earn these days so (laughs) I'm kind of thinking that it was but was football one of those things that you really just were you you had a beautiful connection addiction it was magnetizing to you to just a real love of the game absolutely football made me what I am when the Melbourne Cricket Club had their 150th year anniversary, they asked me to speak. Yeah, so you had the I anniversary. It, I, you were, I, I think you may have just dropped out. You were saying you had the anniversary? No, that the Melbourne Cricket Club had their 150th anniversary. Yeah, just recently? No, yes, oh, about 12 months or so ago. Yes. And they asked me to speak, and I said, everything I have done and have in life I owe to this club. So that's my memory of, of what I've experienced in my life started at the Melbourne Cricket Club football section. So I'm very, very grateful to them and they've really fashioned my whole life. So, Noel, when we just just so people can get an idea of of the 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 massive part that football played in your life, I'm just going to share with people exactly kind of how your career spawned. You you spent a bit over ten years at the Melbourne Football Club. You played in three premierships. You were a best and fairest winner in 1951. You're in the Melbourne team of the century. You know that's a hundred years of football uh, on the halfback flank. You played for Victoria. Um, you're a life member of the football club. You're in the Hall of Fame. Um, I mean, it's it's an it's, it's an incredible honour roll. But if we then take the football out of it and just actually put it down to doing what you loved, and for you it was football. What Damien and I observe in a lot of people that don't feel like they're living their best life, it's that they are not doing what they love. From your from your experience and your uh, view of the world over the ninety years, would you? Um, say that you've observed a lot of people not doing what they love and that's been um, a reason why they haven't lived their life on their own terms? Yes, and I see that they mentally or inside they're very angry and it reflects in their attitude to other people. I was grateful when I came to the Melbourne Melbourne Football Club virtually as a telegraph messenger and they made me go to night school they made me study, and the people I've met there, like the coordinators and those sort of people, lifted me up to their standard. So everything 
I got out of football I'm very grateful for, and that has fashioned me for the rest of my life. And the lessons I learnt there, I've in, inducted into my business life and my whole social life. I think the biggest thing in life is respect, and where there's no respect, there's no loyalty. So you've got to earn respect, and you've got to give respect. And that's my basic idea in life. Ah, oh, that's great. That's great. I think that's a that's again. If we go back to what Marcus said was, was missing, um, was the handshake, the look in the eyes, and the repeating of somebody's name. But to earn respect and keep respect, I think. Um, that underpins it. That's fantastic. No, what what did you do? I mean, I, football these days is a profession, and um, and I don't really know whether or not all of the footballers who play football these days absolutely love it, and I don't really know whether or not they it's their heart and their desire and their motivation to get up and play footy to the best of their ability so that they can fly the flag for their club and put their club, you know, stripe on. I, I don't think that's the case these days, but it was back then because. It was part time, you know. You guys. That's, that's right. We all we all had our own career to to run. At the what same was your time. career? I was in the public service. I started as telegraph messenger, and I passed to the third division, and I went to treasury down at the um, down at the Victoria Barracks, and I become a uh, clerk, and I become a PA to the assistant secretary of treasury. And then after fifteen years. I was finished at Melbourne and I resigned from the public service and went to the country and coached Rochester for five years in the Bendigo League. Well, back then... So um, then I had to change my thing, so I, I, I bought a, a house with a school shop attached to it and then I opened a grocery shop down in the town, so while I was in Rochester, I had, to, had two businesses to run. Well, back then, our... Great mate, the late Tommy Hafey, who's been interviewed on 100 Not Out. He, I always remember him telling me that it was better money going to the country to coach than well, it was. Came up to, he came up to Shepparton about three years after I was at Rochester. Well, because and it was he, a more fruitful And he used to living, come across it? to see me to find out all about the country living and, and, and teams and what to do. Incredible. So Tommy and I were good mates. He was a dead set legend. Absolutely. We're talking, to a, we're talking to a dead set legend now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. yeah we're well, talking. my last year at Melbourne, I captained a premiership and there were 117,000 there wow. and I earned 200 pounds for the year. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to Rochester the next year for 1,000 pounds a year. Wow. So that answers your question. Absolutely. So I want to. Uh, there's a couple of things I want to ask you, but I know that. Um, so in the, um, we're talking probably 20 or 30 years ago, you went back to Melbourne. Um, this is as on the board. Um, you're a uh, vice president to Ian Ridley. So we're talking in your mid 60s. Um, do you get to a point at that stage of your life? I'm coming to you as a 34 year old. Damien's 42. <laughs> when you've been in a in an industry in a world that you love. Um, We've just been speaking to people that get to a point, I'm probably around about 60, where they start to crave to give back to the world, give back to society, particularly in an area of life that's been very good to them. Do you go back to, say, the board at Melbourne as a, as a way to give back? Is that the philosophy behind that type of behaviour at that point in your life? Not particularly. I think it's the involvement. I wanted to be involved. Absolutely. I coached South Melbourne for three years. And those three years were pretty hard. And what it did, it made me appreciate what Melbourne had. So about five years after that, I, I went back to Melbourne. So it was really to be involved again. The involvement is important to me. And this is what Damien's just been just been saying to me as well, is that it's that being with people, and it's obviously the, the type of culture that you wanted to be involved with, but having those real-life... Um, relationships, communications, going back to the basics of what you said at the beginning of the interview, but being socially engaged with people that you want to be engaged with, that make you feel good, that have high standards and all the rest of it. And we have a mutual interest. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're not going there to change things or to revolutionise things. You're there to, to bring it all together and make it, make it work. It's that, the, the, I it's think the that's... involvement. The involvement, the engagement. We talk about that all the time. Involvement, engagement, purpose, movement. We talk about those sorts of things that creates happiness, Noel. And, 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 and you can see it reflecting in other people's face, which makes you so pleased to be involved. Yes. 
Well, that's what I saw in you. That's what I saw in you, Noel, when we're at the party. Your smile, your engagement, your purpose, all of these things that we say underpins a successful aging process, all of the things that we talk about that um, underpins somebody who's doing a great job. You know, when I look at Isabel and her laugh and her smile and her cheekiness and all of those things, you have all of that. But the other thing that I I noticed about you is that you remained um, very engaged and interested in everybody else at the table and i suppose you've probably that's one of the skills you learned but that's i do think that's a i suppose is that something is that something that contributes to your success as a human being oh i don't know about success but contributes to what i think and you mention aging all the time i don't think of age i think of the present it's now we all live within our cocoon as we are and if I'm old, it's just a matter of fact. It doesn't affect me in any way, I don't think. You just co- co- cooperate with what you've got to cooperate with. And when you're mixing with people like I am here, you're almost grateful. Some of the poor people here are much worse off than I, so I've just got to be grateful for what I've got and be thankful for what, what God's given me. So I think... Uh no, that a lot of people still live in the past. So you're very much, and there's so much wisdom in the message that you're sharing, but there's a lot of people that are living in the past or the present. So there's 20-year-olds out there that are scared of being 30 or 40. They think that's old. And then there's 70 and 80 and 90-year-olds that just wish that they were 21 or 30 or 40 or 50 because they can't do the things they used to do or be with the people that they want to be with, travel the world, whatever it is. But it seems to me it's quite clear you have mastered the art of living in the present without holding any growth grudges towards no, the past look, or the future. I, I'm just grateful to be where I am. This morning I had two fellows come to see me who I went to school with in Morty Alec. <laughs> How did that? One of them I played in the 1943 under-18 football premiership in the Federal League for Morty Alec. What's right. better than that? Nothing. There's nothing He's 90 and I'm nearly 90 and we're still seeing each other. Yeah. Why, would we, why would we have to live in the past? We're that's living cool. in the present. And we're all happy with one another. <laughs> that's excellent. That's so great. I love that. What other things have you learned, Noel? What I mean, you live now. Um, you're engaged in, you know, you're engaged in the people that you that you surround yourself with, and which is lovely. You maintain motivation. You're obviously still in touch with your children, which is great. What other things do you think keep you moving? Do you exercise much? Do you do you move around a lot? Not as much as I should, I don't think. But um. In the last, six months ago, I was pretty crook. But the, every month since then, I've been getting better. So I'm not getting older, I'm getting better. Oh, nice. But I feel better. Yeah. That's great. I like feel better. Line. Like a I nice want to fine do line. things. Yeah. So I you... want to do things. I want to get out and meet people. The RSL at Box Hill are very good to me. They supply me with taxi vouchers so I can get out and do things. Oh, it's sensational. Do you, so your your orientation is is squarely on the now and continuing to make your your future better. Whereas, like you said, you, there's other people in the nursing home where you live that don't have the same quality of life as you. You've got, like you said, you're very lucky and fortunate to have yes. the health that you have right now. Um, yes. But it's quite clear from what you're saying that your attitude is very much on making the most of what you have right now and beyond rather than having any hang-ups about anything what? that's happened beyond your control. <laughs> Geez, when I think of some of the some of the hurdles I hit in my life, I wouldn't want to go back. <laughs> Although I told my girls, it's not the hurdles that count as how you jump them. Oh, goody! God, there's there's some pearls. We've got some pearls today. Noel, um, what are you going to do for your ninetieth birthday? <laughs> Have we got a party? I haven't thought about it. Uh, we'll think Annie about was, it for you, Noel. Annie was here yesterday. And I said, now, what about when I die? What are we going to do? She said, Dad, you're not going to die. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you're so immortal. birthdays are only little milestones. Well, that's nothing, very true. Nothing more than that. That's very true. But they're a great celebration of your achievements as well. And, you know, I think that as every day goes by and every moment goes by, it's great to reflect on what's been. Yeah, and, I'm and sure, how good I'm sure are. the Power Cell will do something for my birthday, if not the football club. Yeah. Football yeah. club are wonderful to me still. 
Well, so they should be. I mean, you were part of premierships that we are so far beyond a lot of our years. I still haven't been alive for a Melbourne premiership, and also I still wish, and my hope is that at some stage in my life I get to see one. Well, you lived through they've three. Pro- they've, they've promised me there'll be one before I die. That's what I like to hear. So within three years, we're going to be premiers. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. And maybe you might see a back-to-back premiership from the D's as well. I'll tell, I'll tell Fletcher that's a fact or else I'll kill him. <laughs> <laughs> it could, could be a Richmond and Melbourne premiership. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Of yeah. course you are. Noel, it's been so incredible to glean your wisdom. Thank you so much for sharing it on 100 Not Out. And yeah, we really appreciate your time and being so honest and open about the life that you lived. It's been remarkable. Thank you so much, Noel. Well, thanks for your time. It's been great. Damien, thank you again so much for okay. sharing your wisdom. And um, remember, folks, we'd love to hear your feedback on this. You can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash 100 not out. Go to thewellnesscouch.com and find out more about Damien and the great forage range at damienchristoph.com. Find out more about myself at marcuspierce.com.au. And remember, as always, continue to make the rest of your life the best of your life. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.